What you may not realize if you're new here is that we, we teach in Unity that there is an evolutionary impulse embedded in reality itself. Growth is the way reality works. We are always revealing more of the perfection of God that is showing up as each of us. We teach that God is present everywhere, active everywhere, available everywhere, alive everywhere, including where? Right here. And this gorgeous pack is here, right here. You know, it's right there in that gorgeous package there. God is showing up. And you are perfect. And yet, there's more of you that we haven't seen yet. That's the growth part, that we, there is some evolutionary impulse embedded in all reality and in you as well to reveal more. So today I've got some good news and some bad news and some good news and some bad news and some good news. I think we're going to end up in a good place. In case you didn't understand all that, here's the way the, the young people might say it. <laughs> I'm being a little lighthearted with this good news, bad news thing. Um, it's all good news. But there are moments in our life where things greet us which um, they don't feel like good news, right? But what does Scripture tell us? That all, thing works, all things work together for those that love God and are called according to His purpose. And so what I hope to remind us of today and, and show us is that whatever is going on, it's for our growth and if it feels like it or not, it is good news. So, the acorn and the oak. I love this quote. Today's mighty oak is yesterday's nut that held its ground. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Embedded within that tiny seed, you can hold a handful of them is the, the blueprint for this majestic oak tree. Oh, it's gone. The Bex Prime. Oak. If you ever go over there in their patio, they have these beautiful, I think they're four or five hundred year old live oaks, centuries old oaks, and they all began with just this tiny little seed that contained within it the essence of the mighty oak. You see, life is conspiring on our behalf so that we may reveal more of our oakiness, that we may reveal more of our greatness. You're perfect and you're growing. That is the good news. What's the point of it all? Well, Rumi, the wonderful Sufi, um, the Islam, you know, Sufism is the uh, mystical branch of Islam, and often their, their great masters are wonderful poets, and Rumi was one, but this is actually a little teaching story of Rumi. He said it like this. It's as if we were sent here by a king in a distant kingdom with one task. And if we accomplish this task, this quest, nothing else we do or do not do will have mattered. And if we do not accomplish this one task, nothing else we do or do not do will have mattered. And that quest, that task, is the discovery and the delivery of the authentic self. That's what we're here to do. I grew up thinking that I was defective. And sad to say, my church backed that up. <laughs> there was a message in the, the religion I grew up in that, that said that I was fallen, broken, wounded. And I'm so grateful that that's not the message here at Unity. We don't teach original sin, we teach original blessing. What we teach is that the, the presence of the Holy Spirit has never been apart from your being, your essence. We might forget that from time to time. Or is that just me? Am I the only one that does that? But you are the light of God expressing. And we know that for you today. We know that for you. We do find this in the scriptures, this idea of growth and revealing who we are. This is from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. 
It's a beautiful, mystical understanding of what's happening in life. Ernest Holmes, the author of The Science of Mind, he said, freedom is the divine plan. We are here to be free to express and experience as only we can. They're each of us a unique, irreplaceable, unrepeatable expression of God's love and light and joy and power. That's who we are. And with the scripture, when it says, with unveiled faces, that's the authentic self-peace. When we cease trying to be that which we are not, and we begin to take up with courage and conviction that which we are, we, we remove the barrier between ourselves and God, and then we can be transformed from glory into glory, is the way the King James Version says it, into more of who God created us to be, that indwelling light and power. I love where it says, with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image. You know, that's the other part of that. If we focus on our truth, we become more of that. And if we focus on the limited, small lie of who we think we are or who somebody told us we were, that's what we experience. So our, our hope, our intention for you in unity is that you unveil your face and contemplate the Lord's glory that is your own life. That's what we're about today. Okay, bad news. <laughs> That's the good news. It's not too bad. Growth is the nature of reality, that impulse for evolution. It's not always in joy and light. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that sometimes growth comes from something uh, difficult, kind of tight and painful even sometimes. There's something going on there. I don't know who first said this, but I love it. And we're, I'm going to go right back to good news. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> Bad news is that it can hurt sometimes to grow, but the good news is nothing is happening to you. I see people shaking their heads at me all over this church. <laughs> nothing is happening to you, but everything is happening for you. This may be one of those repeat after me moments. Repeat after me. Nothing is happening to me. Everything is happening for me. All things work together for the good of them. No, we're done. <laughs> David, you're just ready. I know. You're, he's there. He's right there with me. All things working together. Everything that is happening in your life is for your good, for your growth, for your evolution, for the revelation of your wholeness and perfection. It sometimes takes a little bit to get there, does it not? Lisa Nichols, you may have known her from The Secret, wonderful author and teacher. She says, everything is a gift, but some come wrapped in sandpaper. <laughs> but we can grow in grace or in struggle. The growth is inevitable. Eventually, God will get you. <laughs> but if we cease fighting it, See, one of the problems I've, I have found in my own life is that I'm resistant to my growth. I like the acorn existence, and so I'm just going to stay a nice, shiny little acorn. And life has other ideas. God has other ideas. So can you imagine? It might hurt that acorn a little bit. Its whole nature has to be sort of disintegrated in order for the oak to be revealed. Growth means change. One out of one times, 100% of the time. I love that Howard said last week about that death is pretty universal. One out of one person will die. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same with growth. Change is part of it. That beautiful picture of our beautiful Felicity. I'm so glad we got us a church baby. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Miss Felicity Eck. I'm guessing, Jean Marie, that you and David, your life has changed a little bit, has it not? And, a little bit. Maybe your sleep has changed a little bit since you have this little child in your life. Is it worth it? Oh, yeah. It's the same. The thing that is calling to you to grow, it may shake you up. The way that you had constructed your life and your, your existence, every, it, it may need to change. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It will <laughs> need to change. But it's worth it. What is seeking to be revealed in you, to you, for you, through you, and as you 
is as precious as our beautiful little baby, as necessary. Emma Curtis Hopkins is considered the mother of new thought. She was the teacher of teachers. She taught um, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. She taught, let's see, Ernest Holmes. She taught um, Melinda Kramer, uh, who founded, along with somebody else whose name I just forgot, Nona Brooks, I remembered it, uh, founded Divine Science, and many, many other, the early new thought leaders. She was an incredible teacher. She taught, uh, she created two or three seminaries in her life. Uh, she was a protege of Mary Baker Eddy, but within, who founded Christian Science, but when Mary Baker Eddy says, I'm the final revelation, nobody else has any more truth past this, Emma said, not so fast. <laughs> said if God is, because she understood this idea of the evolutionary impulse that as long as human beings are alive, there will be greater revelations of truth. And so she parted ways with, with Mary Baker Eddy, and she began to teach that this evolutionary impulse is everywhere present. And you're good. Oh, this is another thing she said. I forgot to say this in the first service. If you don't like the word God, and many of us are wounded by the religions of our past, and we don't like using that word, add an extra O. She said, put an oo in God, and it becomes good. <laughs> the God is good. All the, oh, I wasn't ready for that. You guys are way ahead of me. Boy, y'all are engaged today. But let's try that. God is good. Oh, That's right. And you can actually substitute the word good for God in your prayer. And your good is seeking to reveal itself in you. But we resist. Who resists their good? We all do. I'm just going to tell you, we all resist our good. Because of, of the old tapes, the, uh, the limited ideas, the belief systems that we inherited from our families, from our culture, we all limit our good. But here, I'm going to give you four keys from Emma Curtis Hopkins on how we can begin to stop doing that nonsense. You ready? She calls them the four C's. We're going to eliminate these things from our patterns. Ready? The first one, competition. It doesn't exist. It's a lie. There is no such thing. Each of us is a unique, irreplaceable, um, unrepeatable expression of God, perfect, whole, and complete, as only I can be and as only you can be. You cannot compete with me. I cannot compete with you. We need to tell this to our presidential uh, hopefuls. There is no such thing <laughs> as competition. The second C, criticism. I saw an elbow go like this just a second ago. <laughs> criticism. Criticism just backs up our false belief in separation. If I can criticize you, and it, it puts me a little above maybe, and then I can see, well, you're obviously not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's separation. And I have ceased believing in the goodness of God that is showing up as that husband, as that wife, as that child, as that parent. Love will wither in, a, in an atmosphere of criticism. Give it up. Deny its place in your life. The third, complaining. More elbows. I see you. <laughs> complaining. To give up complaining. What does that mean for us? That means God is good. All the time. Not all the time, surely. All really. The time. All the time? All the time? Oh. Then why am I complaining? <laughs> yeah. This is rubber meets road spiritual practice to just simply, we think that, and we are a positive faith, and so many of our practices are affirmative and positive. We forget the power of denial. We forget the power of negation. We forget the power of saying, I ain't doing it no more. There's power in that denial. I will not be a place of complaint. And the last one, condemnation. I was thinking it's similar to criticism, but it's deeper. And do you know who gets the bulk of my condemnation? I do. Other people will forgive me much faster than I will forgive myself at times. There is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. And what we mean by that is that them who have, they who have committed themselves to this knowledge that Jesus brought to us of the kingdom of heaven within that Christed spirit, that Christed mind, that when we commit to that, there is no condemnation. That is just the truth. There is none. But when we forget that truth, that's when we're condemning. So, four C's. Commit to them. 
All right. There's a Mark Epstein quote I wanted to share with you. Actually, this was um, from, I shared it on Wednesday night, but it was so good, it's just staying with me. My friend Tricia invited me to the Jung Center benefit on a, on Tuesday night, and the author, um, he's, one of those, he's one of those Jewish Buddhist um, psychiatrist guys. You know those guys? You know, <laughs> wonderful man. And he, he shared that he, when he goes to these uh, silent retreats, which he does, he didn't do it, he said, when his kids were young, but he did it before and he does it after for days or even weeks at a time, and he's done it for 30 years. They, they say, don't bring anything to read or write with. They really want you to be with the moment. But he's a writer, so he said he often will sneak in a notebook. And in the, about day two or three, he said that he'll have some blinding flash of realization, a thought he's never thought before. And so he gets back to his little you know, room and he'll write it down. And then later, he said, it's the same thought that he's written down every single time in every retreat. It just feels so fresh and alive. Do you know what that is? His, he said the thought is, it gets variations of this. It's not what's happening. It's my relationship to what's happening. That's it. And what's happening is not happening to you. It is happening for you. That's the good news. The bad news. This is the last bit of bad news. Are you still with me? All right. The bad news is, well, let me just say this. When you, when you agree to growth, when you give your consent to life, when you say, yes, God, I am willing to heal my past, I'm willing to step out in faith, I'm willing to grow. When you do that, more than likely you get a picture of what self-grown-up Michael is going to look like or what grown-up Mindy is going to look like. You get this image of what it looks like on the other side of all this wonderful spiritual growth. It ain't going to look like that. <laughs> Ever. Not even once. And here's why. You are at the level of consciousness you are today, which is beautiful. You are already whole, perfect, and complete and cannot improve upon it. What you can, I guess you can use the word improve, but what you can expand is your awareness of that, your consciousness of the good that is you, that is God as you. And so you're trying to see yourself from where you are today. And the growth, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, all of the growth that will take you there, those things asked for and not asked for to get you to where you're going to be will change your consciousness. And so where you're going to be then is you can't even see it today because your, your consciousness is not big enough yet. Thomas Merton has a beautiful quote. I forgot to share this in the first service. I came across this a few weeks ago, and it's so good. If the life, if the, if the you of five years ago doesn't consider the you of today a heretic, you are not growing spiritually. <laughs> Just be with that for a second, will you? Many people arrive at unity, and this is not the way that you were taught as a child. You go, I must, I, I'm, you, I, my Pentecostal brother considers me a heretic. I take it as a, a badge of honor because <laughs> I know I'm growing spiritually. I have grown into the teaching of unity. But this, Thomas Merton is a beautiful Christian mystic, a monk, and he, he understood something about this evolution, evolutionary impulse for growth that is everywhere. And life will change how you think. God will expand your understanding of what is good and acceptable. The mystics... The mystics all agree that God is so good, God is so good everywhere, that can, a mystic can see the most difficult situation in humanity and, and perceive God's presence in that situation. We're not there yet, but that's where we're headed. And so the things today to you that are unacceptable... The things today to you that I will never condone that. I will never be in agreement with that. Whatever. I'm just saying don't never say never. That your consciousness, your growth, your awareness of how good God is and how present God is will grow as you grow. Another way of understanding this, I saw that Jean Marie and I hosted a movie here on campus last year uh, over in the Pyramid after church one Sunday. Um, I can't, was it called New Thought? It was New Thought the Movie. That's what it was, New Thought the Movie. And one of the teachers in that talked about, there's a, there's a, 
a sort of misunderstanding or an incomplete understanding of the way the, the law of attraction works. And people say, saying, I can use this law of attraction to manifest or demonstrate a Ferrari. And he said, and you can, but it takes a lot of growth in your consciousness to do that. Because the truth is, you don't get what you want using the law of attraction, you get what you are. And by the time your consciousness has grown to the place where you could demonstrate a really nice Italian sports car, you realize that's really not what your soul is about. So by the time you grow your consciousness to the point where you can demonstrate that Ferrari, you probably don't want it. And maybe you do. Maybe that is to the glory of God. I'm not going to limit you that way. If that's what God is calling you to do, then go for it. So good news. God knows. We may not know what our life will look like. We may not want the, we don't, may not like the idea that I'm going to be a heretic in five years. I like where I am today in my beliefs, in my understanding. God knows. We don't talk a lot about a, the divine plan. I mentioned earlier the, um, Ernest Holmes' quote about the divine plan is one of freedom. That's really what we teach is that there's not, a, there's not a, a, an Excel spreadsheet in heaven that has your, your, all of your plan in it, the things you're supposed to accomplish on that day. It's not like that. But what it is is that as we unveil our face to God, as we become more and more in tune with our authentic nature, we step into choices and relationships and patterns of, of doing and being in the world that feel like it was just meant to be. It feels like... This is what God had in mind. My plan was to be the next Billy Joel. <laughs> My plan did not include being here this morning with y'all. God knows best. So you can trust God that you will be led to exactly where you will need to be. You will be healed in exactly the way you need to be healed. And what the only thing that ever needs to be healed is your belief in separation. That's the only thing that ever needs to be healed. It says it this way in the Course in Miracles. A sense of separation from God is the only lack you really need correct. And Ernest Holmes said it this way. The only thing we need to heal is our belief in our separation from God. So, how are you? What are you doing? Yes, you are. That's the good news. It's all good news. It's all good news. You are here to reveal the beauty, the wonder, the joy, the light, the grace of God. You're enough right now, just as you are. Now go be more. I love you. God bless you.